Hello everybody, this is Cameron Snow with Dynomics.com. In this video, I'm going to review how we can go about doing a spatial-based curve normalization. In this case, I'm going to use the gamma ray curve as the example that we're going to be working on, but the same method methodology can be applied to any of the curves that we're going to be looking at. So let's jump right in and get started. So the way this process works with spatial-based normalization is the first thing we're going to do, need to do is make a set of grids. We're going to uh, remove the outliers from those grids, smooth those grids, and then we're going to run that flow. And then we're going to use the results from that flow to do the spatial-based normalization. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to create that flow. And this can either be file, new flow, or you can click on the folder and say new flow. So I'm going to call this uh, norm grids and hit OK. Right now I've got this new blank flow and what I need to do is walk through the process here. So we're going to start off with a log input and we're going to choose um, our demo data set for our logs. Then we're going to need a CPI log calc block and first thing I'll do here is I'll select my CPI, my tops, uh, well headers, and my uh, key well data set again. <clears throat> and now what I need to do here is I need to come into the equations block and I need to put in the equations to calculate my percentile values that, that I want to use for my endpoints. Now, most of you probably aren't going to remember the formula for this right off the bat, but I want to demonstrate it here in the CPI. So we're going to go to our equation playground. We're going to clear out this example equation, and we're going to create a placeholder here called P5 and P95. Now, of course, these don't exist, so now what we have to do is we have to type these in. So it's going to be by formation, percentile, uh, let's say 95, and at gamma ray, uh, norm input and I need to add one more quotation or, or uh, parentheses there and then we're going to do the sorry that should be the p5 not the p95 and here we have this um, now I actually don't want to do this by formation I want to do this over the statistics window so this should actually be by stats window and by stats window and now we need to make that the p95 and now what i see is my p5 is a value of around 68 in my key well and my p95 is a value of around 136. so i'm going to copy this i'm going to come back over here to my flow and i'm going to paste it into here and i need to go shift enter to get to the new line i'm going to paste that in again Okay, so this one will be the P5, this one will be the P95, and what I need to do is I need to give those a name. So it'll be gamma ray underscore P5 is equal to, and gamma ray underscore P95 is equal to that. And let me zoom in uh, just a little bit here, and I will linger uh, for a second, so you'll have time to pause the video and copy this down in case you need to copy the equation. Okay, and uh, as a reminder, if you need to do this for other curves, all you need to do is copy those, hit shift enter to get a new line, paste them in, and we could also make, for example, in fee, uh, and in fee, and then we just change that to the uh, in fee norm input and in fee norm input. And if you need to know the name of the curve, uh, that, that you need to put here, you can come over to your CPI, go to the curve normalization, and when you uh, click on the info, it tells you, okay, we have the curve SP norm and SP norm input. So norm input is the one that's going into the normalization and being modified. SP norm is the one that's coming out. Um, same thing for density, row B norm, row B norm input. And then same, same for gamma ray here. All right, so now that we've got that, um, that's the calculation that we're going to run. And we need to, most importantly, say points, one per curve. And now we're going to 
go points, spatial filter. The spatial filter is what will remove outliers. And what we're going to do here is we're going to tell it to remove outliers. We are going to remove them by a by the uh, value column. And this is a fairly small data set, so we're only going to look at 11 neighbors. We're going to look at the uh, 10th and 90th percentile of those uh, of that set of 11 neighbors. And if it falls outside of that, we're going to remove it. So I'm going to set the outlier ratio, ratio to zero. Um, and then we're working in lat long for this project. So we're going to use the columns lat and long. And then in our next step, we are going to uh, do a points to grid. And our points to grid, once again, we choose the columns lat and long. We choose the value is what we want to map. And it's grouping things by property. So it'll we'll get a map for P5 and P95 for gamma ray and neutron here. And we're just going to have it use the project's uh, projection file here. Um, as a matter of fact, just for certainty, um, I'm going to create a projection file. I'm going to say edit projection. OK, and I'm just going to leave it at the default. But if you have your own .prj, that's where you would put that in. OK, I'm going to save my flow. Um, so now it's making a grid, but we want to smooth that grid. So I'm going to put a grid smooth block in here. Um, I'm going to leave the defaults on, and then I'm going to put a grid output. And I'm just going to call this uh, norm grids example. And then I will hit the uh, run button here. And what this will do is it will uh, start a new flow. You'll see the uh, jobs menu pop open. And then it will make those grids for us. Uh, this should be a relatively quick process because you know we're essentially just working with uh, the raw curves uh, for, for most intents. In purposes here they've just been aliased and undergone a little bit of unit conversion work for us um, there we go that's now finished and now if I come over here it's been made in the same folder in my file tree and if I click on example grids I now see that I have a grid for p95 for p5 for mp p95 and mp p5 all right so now that I've got that now what I need to do is I need to apply it so I'm going to come back over here to my uh, CPI, and I'm here in the curve normalization module. And the curve that I'm going to apply this to in this case is the gamma ray curve. So what I want to do is I want to choose the method scale to fixed range. So, okay, that's scale to fixed range. And then the parameters we have for fixed range are a low percentile and a high percentile, a low value and a high value. And what we did is we just made a map of the uh, gamma ray P5. So what we do is we click on the gear icon. Let me show you that again. We hover over the box. We click on the gear icon. We select interpolated table. We're going to choose norm grids example grid. That's the one that we just made, and we're going to choose the P5. And we're going to hit OK. <clears throat> and now it'll populate this one. And then we'll come over to here, click on the gear icon for the high value, click on interpolated table, choose that grid we just made, choose the gamma ray P95, <coughs> and we're going to hit OK there. And now what you'll see is that um, the box has gone away, and now the value is populated here. And if I come over and I click on a different well, you know, I can see here we have, uh, you know, low and high values. You know, we can click from well to well and see how things have been normalized. We can also click on our cross section here, and we can look at our norm. Um, uh, sorry, we can look at our gamma ray normalization QC plot. Um, so let me just make this a, a bit bigger here. And we can see how our various wells have been uh, stretched and squeezed here. So we can see, you know, very small shifts for most of these wells. Uh, but, you know, we, we, have, um, we have applied normalization here. 
Okay, now if we want to see what those input grids look like, they are now available to us in the quick mapping. They'll be down at the bottom of the list, and it says norm grids, example grid, P5, and it'll show us what is being used for that normalization. And it's as simple as that. Um, so that's how you do it. Um, and now we have spatially normalized all our grids uh, using a map of the P5 and P95 uh, values from the gamma ray as our end points. Um, things that you'll need to play with uh, to get this right is you may need to come in here to your flow and uh, specifically, you know, play around. Is it the P5, the P10, the P90, the P95 to, to get the value you want right there? Um, you may also want to play around with your point spatial filter and decide, you know, is it 11 neighbors, 15, 21? Is it your P5, 10, 20, you know, for your low percentile, P, you know, 80, 90, 95 for your high percentile? Um, but once you've done that, uh, it should be, you know, a fairly uh, straightforward process and applying it um, is something that's fairly easy to QC because you can check it here in the cross sections. You can check it in the well log view. You can look at the endpoint normalization here in the map. And of course, you can always come in and look at the things like the average gamma ray final map or the gamma ray norm RMS map uh, to understand um, what your final map looks like. All right, I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us at support at Thank you.